Hey, yo, what's up, guys? Baby Bear forty eight twelve coming at you one more time. Um, I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing because I just noticed how often I've worn this like these Molson Canadian shirts on here. They should start sponsoring these videos. I mean, absolute garbage beer, but brilliant T-shirts. Six six five non decreasing array is is today's problem. It's marked as an easy straight propaganda. This thing should be at least the medium. I, I mean, so the acceptance rate right here. I was actually just working it out. Is something like. I think it's like 19%. Like if we go what, five, four, seven, two, seven, seven over 106, it, it's like it's under 20%. And I, I divided that the wrong way. Do it the other way, it's like 19, 19%. It's a tough problem. Um, Amazon, eBay, Bloomberg, Facebook have all asked it a couple of times. So the odds that you're gonna get it in an interview, eh, not huge, but nonetheless still a, a good problem to consider. And I, I wanted to go over it for that reason. We are, we're given an array nums with n integers, and in our constraints we're told that n is between uh, 1 and 1,000, and the numbers are anywhere from negative to positive 10,000. Uh, and we need to check if it can become non-decreasing by modifying at most one element. Okay? Non-decreasing doesn't mean that it's always increasing per se, but it means that it's not going down. So it could say, it could, it could plateau, and that's, that's fair game. Uh, we and here we go. We define an array as non-decreasing if uh, the the next number in the array is greater than or equal to the previous one, and that holds for every uh, zero-based index i such that zero is less than or equal to i, which is less than or equal to n minus two, so up until the second last element. Uh, to give an example, uh, we got four two three, which clearly is not non-decreasing. Uh, it decreases once from 4 to 2, but then it's it's upward from 2 to 3. And the explanation there, the reason we'd return true is because we could modify the array such that uh, if we, you know, they say if we change the 4 to a 1, or, or you can think about even just popping that number off entirely. If we were to scrap it, then 2, 3 would be a valid answer. 4, 2, 1, however, would not be non-decreasing for the reason that we decrease from 4 to 2 and from 2 to 1. So no matter what number we, we try to pick out of there or change, we are always going to have some form of, of decreasing. All right, so I think the problem statement is, is simple enough, but I don't think that the solution is trivial, as is usually the case with these videos, which is why I make them. Otherwise, I wouldn't be bugging you guys with these videos, would I? So I'm re-recording this part now because uh, I did the whole video and, and messed up an explanation. So uh, take two on this, not that it matters to you guys. But we let's start by looking at a few examples here of of kind of just to elaborate a bit on what they gave us here because they didn't really give us too much to, to work with. Uh, I want to kind of shift our mindset to thinking about what makes uh, a valid array and what makes a, a non-valid one. And when I say valid, I mean in the context of, you know, being able to make a non-decreasing with at least one change. If we look at an array like this, um, we're happy with this one. And, and the reason we're happy with it is because it's always increasing. There's no drop. So there's no point at which we go from a higher number to a lower one. So I'm going to write this as an example of a no drop array. And if we find that there's no drop, we're actually, we're happy with that, right? So if we walk through this array and we realize we've never dropped off, that's cool, right? We, we don't have an issue with this. What about if we have an example like this, two, one, and then three, four, five. So we, we grow afterwards. Are we okay with the array or not? Well, this one is, is very similar to four through three. And, and what makes this one nice, I consider this a bit of an edge case, is that it's happening here at the beginning. Once it happens at the beginning, whoops, sorry about that, let's quit that. Uh, since it happens right at the at the beginning, we can hypothetically change this number to any number we want. Even if we were to scrap it, it doesn't matter because everything else after that is increasing. So we can deal with this, you know, super easily, this first number. So if, if our drop is at zero, that's shocking. If our drop is at zero, we're also okay with that. So we can have no drop or if we have a drop and it's at zero, we're good. Let's see a couple more examples. What about this one? We have one, two, three, five, and then we drop off at four. Again, this one I'd consider a bit of an edge case. And the reason it's an edge case is because, you know, since we have this, this second last number, we can always just change it to whatever this previous number is, right? I'm only dropping off at, at one point. And even if I was to scrap this number entirely, we'd be good because then it's, it's steadily increasing. So I'd make the argument that if we drop at the second last number, so if we drop, uh, uh, I'll call it length minus two. It looks like one. Uh, we're also good. And no, we can't really ever drop off at the last number because that would imply there's a number after the array, which which there isn't. 
Um, so I'd argue that in these three cases, we're good. If we, if we walk through this array, we see that there's no drop. There's no drop at zero and there's, or sorry, there's no drop or we drop right at the beginning or we drop right at the end. We're cool. We can, we can return, we can return true. Like we're happy with this arrangement. What about this one over here? If I got one, three, two, four, zero. Well, I, I go from one to three. That's fine. We drop off at two. Okay. We climb up to four. Maybe we'd be okay so far. Maybe if we scrap this two, we're good. But then we drop off one more time. Meaning that no matter what I do, since I got a drop off here and I got a drop off here, there's nothing I can do to salvage this thing, right? This one is going straight to the bin. We're going to return false here. And the reason is that we've got two or more drops. Obviously, if we had even more drops, there's nothing we can do to mitigate this, given that our condition says we can make it most one change. So there are two drops. No good. So we've covered the scenario where we've got no drops, where we've got two or more drops, where we've got one drop that's either at the beginning or at the end. What about the most interesting case? And that's going to be this one over here, uh, where we have a drop that's, that's in the, kind of in the middle. So as you can see, we, we increase, then we increase some more, and then we drop off, and then we increase. So is this array valid, yes or no? That's the question. When I say valid, again, will at most one change help us here? The answer is no. And, and here's kind of the reason why. Here's why we can think about, shit, sorry, I'm like, like antsy today. I keep playing with my damn hat. I'm sorry about that. Uh, why is this an issue? Well, I can see that. So I go from one to three to five, and then I drop off to two. Okay. The issue is that since I'm, I'm dropping off to two, like I've got a bit of a problem here where this two is lower than this three. And, and that would be all right. But the problem is that if I go up to the four now, the four is now less than the five. So I've got, I'm hit, getting hit with the double whammy. This two is less than the three, and the four is less than the five. If one of these were not the case, then maybe we can make something happen. So let's pretend that this wasn't a four, this was a five. And all that I had, uh, where I'm, I'm kind of decreasing, sure, I had this decrease from five to two, but you know what? If, if this was our original array and this, we could make one change and that change now became to make this a three. Uh, we'd have one, three, five, three, five. Meaning that if I kind of, if I made this change, uh, sorry, what am I saying here? Imagine, so, okay, so <laughs> let me, let me kind of backtrack on that. The two is less than the three here. All right. And, and the five is less than the four. That's the problem. Now imagine I made this something bigger. Imagine this was a, imagine this was a six. Okay, so imagine this was a, a six just for argument's sake. I could scrap this too. That could be the one change that I make, and then we'd be happy. So we, we'd be increasing. So all of a sudden, this scenario, which was irreversible, would have been fine if this number was a, a six. Even better yet, even if it was a five. Even if this number was a five and I scrapped, then my one change that I could make would be scrapping this too. I'd have one, three, five, five, which is non-decreasing. So I would have been happy if this number, so this is my peak, if p plus two, if p plus two was was greater than was greater than or, or equal to my peak, then I'd be good, right? If this was a if this was a six, if this was a six or this was a five or if this was a seven, it doesn't really matter, right? We'd actually we'd be all good there. Whoops, sorry. Um, we would be all good if that were the case. Now, we're still bothered by the fact that, okay, so this was one issue, but, you know, maybe we could remedy that again with, with this condition. But here we're getting hit with the double whammy, like I said, because, you know, we're, we're bothered by how far down we're dropping here. And, and what I mean by that is this. Let's imagine for a second that this number were a three. Okay, let's imagine that this number were a three. So this number was no longer smaller than, than this one. They were the same. And this is the array that was given to me. I could salvage this, and the way I could salvage this is by thinking about just popping out the 5, or by making the 5 a 3, and that would be my one change. And if that were the case, then I could mitigate this drop-off, meaning that if my peak, if my peak plus 1 was, was greater than or equal to my peak minus 1, if it was greater than or equal to it, then I could salvage something. If it was greater, imagine I had a, had a 4 right here, right? imagine I had a 4, then I could take this and I can make the five a four, or I can make it a three and, and it would still be non-decreasing. The issue I have with this one is I'm getting hit with the whammy here. I'm getting hit with the second whammy right here. And that's why we're really eating dirt on this one. If at least one of these things was true, we'd be able to salvage things. Alas, neither of these things are true. And this actually rounds off the, the main condition. I think the hardest ones to see in this problem 
in, in terms of making the, the array non-decreasing. To summarize all that, so if these two let me make this a bit more a bit more clear. If these if either of these two is true, we're actually good to go. We, we can we can solve this. We said that if we have no drop, or if we had a drop at zero or a drop at the end, so no drop, drop at beginning, drop at end, or one of these things was true here, and meaning that my drop was kind of in the middle, but but one of these things was true, we could salvage this. The issue we'd have here would be if we had two or more drops, then we'd immediately say again. Hey, this ain't happening, right? We can't, we can't fix this. This is non. We can't salvage anything here. So the way we're gonna walk through the code will be in a linear time complexity and a, a constant space complexity. We're not gonna take up any extra space apart from our, our drop variable, and we're gonna do it iteratively. What we can do as we walk through is we'll we'll say, look, at any given point, if I if I don't have a drop yet, I haven't found one yet, and I come across one, then I'll, I'll set the drop to the index that I'm at. So if it's at zero or length minus two or, or any of these. However, if I get, if I already have a drop, and then I come across another drop as I'm walking through, then I got to return false because I know I have at least two drops and there's nothing I can do with at most one change. So that's, that's going to be the, the general logic of the code. We're going to walk through, check for drops. If we already have one, return false. If we don't, let's set that drop, and then we'll check at the end for all these conditions to see if one of them is true, whether or not we can do anything about this. I'm going to begin, since we're, we're told here we're going to have at least one element, uh, we, we don't have to do any error checking this time around. So I'm just going to set my drop variable equal to none. I'm going to start walking through my for loop by saying for i in the range of, uh, of the length of nums minus 1. I'm always going to be looking one item ahead. And remember, we said if I get to the end, it doesn't really make sense to check for a, a drop off after the end. So that's why we're going only for the second last element. Now, we'll say if the drop is not none, meaning we've already had a drop, just return false. If we've already had a drop, so we've, we've changed this value at some point. This means we come across a second drop, can't save it, return false, and, and that's it, problem over. Otherwise, we're gonna set the drop equal to, to the index i. And that's, the, that's all we're gonna do for the walkthrough. That's how we're gonna check for, for this condition over here, whether we can return false. Now, we can only return true if one of these five things is true. So if no drop, drop at zero, drop at length minus two, or one of these two bad boys. So we got a few things that we gotta return. So if, if or sorry, if drop is none, or, uh, drop is equal to zero, or this is an or, or we say drop is equal to length minus two, or and obviously I'm, just, I'm doing pseudo code here, or we said if peak plus two is greater than or equal to peak, peak plus two is greater than or equal to peak, and, and this I'm referring to the indices here, not the not the values, um, and and we said that if if peak plus one is greater than or equal to peak minus one. That if I've, any of these things is true, then we're good. If any of these is satisfied, we're, we're happy to do this. Um, yeah, that's about it. The, so the reason, and some of you may, may be wondering uh, if we're going to get an out-of-bounds exception here when we're looking at peak plus 2 in, in case we're trying to check the index outside of the array. The answer is no, we won't because uh, because Python's got lazy evaluation of, uh, of these kind of statements. And, and meaning, if that were the case, the only time that would happen is if we were at the end or the second last element. We're never making it to the last element because it's for loop. If our second last element is the drop, we're already going to return true because we've satisfied this. So that's why we don't have to worry about that. Really, then I'm just returning whether or not any one of these is true, right? Or if any one of these items is true, we're good. So I'm going to say return drop is equal to zero. If that's true, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, if it's not, let's check the other conditions we have. If drop is equal to length minus two, also return, whoops, length, I guess this is a length of nums, excuse me, minus two. Or, and, and these backslashes, by the way, they're just, um, they're, they're line splitters in, in Python, so I can keep writing code on the next line without kind of registering the white space, because we all know Python really cares about white space. Um, sorry, and I forgot the one that I, I, I forgot the first one here, which is drop is none. If it's a drop is none, or, and then we get down here, or, now, peak plus two greater than or equal to peak, we mean that as the index, so, if, or the value at that index. So if the nums of, of peak plus two Maybe I'll, if it's greater than or equal to peak, then we'd be good, right? Or finally, if nums of p plus one was greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to nums of uh, peak minus one, and missed that there, 
then those are the only conditions we need. And if any of these is true, we're actually going to return true. If none of them are true, this is going to return false, and we're going to be all done. And that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. I just wanted to run it really quick, make sure I didn't make any ish mistakes. Oh boy, which I did. Let me see what I did here. I made the mistake right here, kind of the, the obvious mistake. Um, and I'm, you guys must have been screaming at me when you saw this one. We actually need to check if there's a damn drop by comparing the index of where we are to, to where we want to be. Um, so we, we say that if, if nums of i is greater than nums of i plus one, then there's a potential for, for an actual, oops, what am I doing? Then there's a potential for a drop. Otherwise, if this isn't the case, like we're always increasing. We, we got nothing to check for. So that was really stupid. Um, peak is not defined. And I don't know why I called it peaking. Did I do that here? Oh boy, I gotta be stopped. Uh, that's how I did it when I originally submitted this problem, which is why it's it's kind of in my brain. But I think I think drop makes a bit more sense. Let me press submit here and make sure I didn't I didn't mess it up this time. And there we go. You see the runtime. You see the memory usage. I'm sorry. I know there were a few kind of terminology mistakes there, and a small bug. Um, I hope that made sense. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any questions about this. Um, yeah, feedback as always, happily appreciated. So as a like, comment, share, subscribe, you know the drill, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.